Right now, therefore, remember that formerly you were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word today. Father, we ask you right now with the power of the Holy Spirit to be upon us, Lord. Lord, we'll not just ask you, Lord God, to empower us with an understanding, but even the power, Lord, to absorb your word in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that today we will not just be hearers of your words, but we will also be doers of your words, Father God. And whatever we hear today, Lord God, it will give the soothingness and the calmness in our hearts that we are indeed your people that you are called, Father God. Today we stretch our hands in prayers to the people that we love. May they be the Philippines, Lord, in Africa or wherever they are in this part of the world. Father, we pray that you will just protect them and guide them right now, Lord. That in the name of Jesus, Lord God, no works of the enemy shall prevail upon them right now, Lord God. And all the blessings that you have entrusted unto us, Lord God, we pray that you will keep it, Lord. God, in your hedges of thorns and protection, Lord God, so we may be able to enjoy it all the days of our life. Father, once again, today we just want to give you back all the praises, the glory, and honor that you deserve. For this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap in hand. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Let's all be seated. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. Let me read it to you one more time. It says there, therefore, remember that formerly you were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Now remember that at the time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise with hope and without God in the world. But now, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Today we will talk about the intricacy of our identity before the Lord. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. What are these? Gold. Very good. I'm just out for a month and you all start to become retarded. <laughs> Amen. What color is the zebra? What color is the zebra? Well, some people will say black and white. And other people will probably say white and black. So again, that depends upon you. Both ways, the zebra has the same color. Black and white. Or white and black they don't have any problem with this this is how God has made them therefore it is accepted to them that neither is what it is to them now most of the time or since two years back I was so intrigued about my name Rico Blevins Ado I will not I, I, what I'm amazed or what I'm intrigued with is not the Rico because I know the Spanish for rich. It is. Hello, are you there? And I will not talk about Ado because I know that's local. I want to talk about the Blevins. I said, I want to know what Blevins is all about. I want to know where is this name or where did this name come from? Obviously, it's my, the maternity name, the, the, the last name of my mother. So where did this they come out. I mean, my mother basically is half American. Hello? It shows. Hello? It's half American. Because my Lolo, from my mother's side, of course, is an American, full American. So I start looking and, you know, trying, went through all these websites and paid a little bit here. I went to ancestral.com and all this kind of thing to find the genealogy of, the, of my last name or my middle name, Blevins. And this is what I found. Blevins has a coat of arms. Wow, my gosh. 
uh, you know, it's like a royalty. Blevins, it has a family crest. The surname Blevins, or Blevins, of course, it's now transliterated, transliterated to Blevins, was from a Welsh given name. Sorry, uh, I'm Welsh. The people Raquel Welsh, but I'm Welsh. I'm from Wales. Can you imagine that? Uh, not just an American, but I'm from Wales. It's a Welsh given name, Bladeen, originally derived from the element blade or wolf. Hello? And in, okay, often used in the medieval Welsh as a term for hero. Hello, are you there? Please, don't tell my Indian. Okay? Don't be uh, jealous. But this is, go and find your name. Sorry, for you? So, oftentimes, this is, uh, you know, a Welsh, or medieval Welsh is a term for hero and sometimes for a cruel man. A cruel man or an enemy of faith friendship. Yung pong nang iiskam ng friendship. Those that pretend to be your friend. I am your friend, by the way. The name is also spelled Blevin, Blevin, Blevins, Plidon, or Blevins. It is a fixed hereditary surname began to be taken in, in Wales after the administrative union with England in 16th century and so on and so forth. So you know, it get me so excited. I said to myself, wow, my God, I have a crest. Too bad my family is adult, otherwise I wouldn't like, to, like you to use this. Hello? So I have this. So I'm so excited. I said, wow, my God. I mean, I'm from the Philippines. But my grandfather is from the States, which is originally from Wales. Well, can you imagine how much more is the connection that I have in all these places? But that puts me in a very big dilemma. So what am I? Am I a Filipino? Am I an American? Or should I just take the citizenship of Wales? Are you, are you there? I remember Brother Precious was saying earlier, you know, her, her mother got denied for entering the U.S. a few months ago because her green card expired for a certain reason because she's not originally an American. Are you here? Now, can you imagine finding yourself in a situation where you find, you know, the most credible and the most, uh, let's just say, accepted citizenship which you want, you become, want to become? Some of you have nice last names, right? My wife was Cortez. Yeah? She's Spanish from Miko. We have Paris also. Spanish from Batangas. And so on and so forth. Can you imagine that one day you will find out that, hey, look, my ancestors, or the ancestral line that I have, come from a very known country. This is what it's all about, identity. Now, when you describe identity crisis, now, identity crisis is, let's just say, described as this, or as defined as this. It is a noun. Identity crisis is a period of uncertainty and confusion in which a person's sense of identity or the fact of who he is being becomes insecure typically due to a change in their expected aims or role in a society. Usually it happens in a person or yourself when you start to have a transition from a certain period or a certain stage of one's life, whether it is uh, by age or whether you are put in another place. Remember when you were young? Hello? Nobody remembers they're, they're young. Remember when you were young, you were, you know, you were a um, teenager, or you are a child and you go to a teenager, you start having your identity crisis. Am I still a child or I'm now a teenager? Then when you become a teenager to adult, or to at least to, to a young adult, you start having the same thing. You ask yourself, well, am I a teenager right now? I mean, you, or am I allowed to do things? Can I make decisions for myself? Are you here with me? Are you, are, are you, are you, are you with me? Can you, can you relate to this? This is sometimes what happens to us. Some of you even, when you came here, you had identity crisis. 
Because you are now in a foreign land with foreigners, not only just Filipinos, but all kinds of uh, uh, foreigners in this land. So sometimes you think that you're not no longer a Filipino. That's why when you go back to the Philippines, you are always complaining how hot it is, as if you never came there. Ang init! Ang init dito sa Pilipinas! You know? Pag-air ko natin yung buong Pilipinas. Hello? So that's the identity crisis. You know, church, even in the context of our church or being a part of the body of Christ, we have the same problem. In the church setting, we oftentimes wonder who we are in the body of Christ. You know, you go out there, you see a lot of people who are worshiping the Lord and they are part of the body of Christ. And you start wondering, who am I into this body of Christ? Are we the chosen people? Are we the chosen nation? Are you here with me? But, but, but what about the Jews? If we are if we're Christians, the, the, the chosen people, the holy nation, the royal priesthood, what about the Jews? Aren't they God's people also? Are they not the apple of God's eyes? Is Israel God's holy nation? Is there such a thing right now as holy or modern Israel? Are we the new Israel? Or am I just a Gentile? And this is what we want to dispel, discover today. Who am I in the body of Christ? Are you ready? Praise the Lord. See, Paul already established this identity to make clear for us who we are as the people of God. And where was that? It's taken from the scripture that we have started, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 13. It says there, therefore. So you know what the word therefore, it means that you have to take in context the scripture that is ahead of what we are already reading. But he says there, remember that formerly, so meaning not what you are right now, but what you were before. Are you here with me? Formerly, you are Gentiles by what? by birth and called uncircumcised. So there's a relationship between the word Gentile and the word uncircumcised. By whom? By those who call themselves the circumcision. Okay? Which is done by the body by human hands. So here you see two words. The word Gentile and the word, the circumcision, it is put as a noun. Are you here? So there is a group of people that is called the Gentiles who are considered uncircumcised by birth and those that have been also probably been born uncircumcised but for some reason, by the work of the, the hand, a human hand, they were already circumcised. There were two of them, Gentiles uncircumcised and the circumcised which is considered uh, later on, as we call in um, Genesis chapter 7, okay? Later on, Je Genesis chapter 7, as the people of God. The word here is this, the Gentiles and the, the ones that are called circumcised are separate from Christ. We are all separated from Christ. There is a wall that's divided. There is a black and there's white, there's white, there's black, there's A, there's B, there's C, and there's D. Now, the word of God tells us here very, very explicit that we are, as the Gentiles, because Paul is addressing this to the church of Ephesus, he was saying, you were once excluded. What, the, what is the word excluded? It means you are not part of. Are you here with me? How many are still awake? Raise your hands. How many are sleeping? Snore. Amen? You were excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant, okay, to the covenant of the promise. So it is here right now. Israel and foreigners to the covenant. But we are just one in the body. But how come there's Gentiles? There are those groups that are called circumcised. And there is the Israel and foreigners of the covenant. We will go through that. 
These are the people before that was called without hope and without God. So those chapter, we don't have hope, we don't have God, we are nothing. But in Christ Jesus, those who were once far away are now what? Being brought near by the blood of Christ. Today we will learn and we will study and I hope that in the next uh, series or in the next chapters of the series, we will be able to reconcile right now that we are all indeed in one body. But here, it looks like as if there are so many parts. Are you here with me? Remember the circumcision, okay? In Genesis chapter 17, the covenant of circumcision was given by God to Abraham. Hello, are you reading your Old Testament? In Genesis chapter 17, if you read through this, God spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I want to have a special covenant with my people, with you and my people, that all the male, okay, all the male children or child that will be coming, including you, will have to be circumcised. And you know what circumcision is? It's taking the foreskin of the private part of the guy. Are you here with me? Are you here? Yes, Amen. And you know what's funny here? In Genesis chapter 17, when God asked Abraham to be circumcised, he's 99 years old. Hello? How come nobody's reacting? <laughs> you know, God said, you have, to, you have to be circumcised first, and then after that, those that are at least eight days or eight, you know, eight days old would have to be started to circumcise. But he's 99, do you have You know, I remember Dolphy and Pachito, and I see sometimes in, in the old, uh, what you call this, videos, it's so funny. And we have said, Tabak. He has this, this big axe or whatever it is. That, yeah. <laughs> now, Abraham is 99 years old. I cannot imagine. How many of you? Oh, no, I will not ask anyone. <laughs> For the boys. <laughs> you know when? I, I, I wasn't circumcised when I was eight days old. Maybe I was already in high school. You know, I remember I used to, you know, during the summer. Sorry, I said it a bit private. But during that summer, well, that summer before I go to high school, my mom said and my dad said, you have to be circumcised once and for all. I said, yes. So I'm wearing the, the, the yeah, the part the skirt of my, my mom during that time. Now, I was just imagining Abraham, 99 years old. But then, of course, the covenant of God is this. I want the people who've got to be circumcised. Now, not because they just want to circumcise, because they want to demonstrate the cleanliness that will be coming out on the line of Abraham. That's what it's all about. Are you with me? Okay, that is what it's all about. That, that from this day on, everyone who will come to you, at least in the covenant of God, they will be clean. So what happened next is this. So if there are people, Gentiles, the circumcised, there are Israel and foreigners and covenant and so on and so forth, but in the word of God in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4 verse 6 it says there there is only what? One body but how come there? It looks like so many there is one body and one spirit just as you are called to what? One hope when you were called one Lord one faith one baptism, one God and the Father all who is over all and through all and in all there is a unity already in the, in the book of Ephesians. In the Old Testament, it seems that there's so many names, there's so many group of people, but it is there, it is prophesied that we will all be one. Now, this is what I want you to understand right now. I don't care if you come from whatever country you come from. A brother came to me a few months ago and said, Pastor, is Jesus Christ black? I don't hear. Is Jesus Christ black? It doesn't matter if he's black or not. But let me explain this to you. That we are now in one body. So the black, the white, the red, the yellow, it doesn't matter anymore. Because we have been put together in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 4, it says one body, one God, one Father of all. So it has to be reconciled from a lot to one. And that's what we will be talking about today but for us to be able to understand this to understand where we are in the part of the body of Christ we need to understand first a little bit the history of God's people which is the Israelites are you ready 
Today I want to talk to you about the word Gentile. But before I able to talk to the word Gentile, I have to go back a little for you to understand what this word or where this word actually later on came about. Israel is what they call the circumcised nation. Are you here with me? So I will be doing a little bit of teaching today. And then sooner or later we will be having our preaching and teaching. Israel, or the 12 tribes of Israel, is considered the circumcised nation during that time. Are you here? These are the 12 tribes of Israel. Some of you already know. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, God, Asher, Sebulun, Ishakar, Joseph, and Benjamin. These 12 tribes, okay, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, then after Jacob, then to Joseph, and then to Joseph to Moses. Now, these tribes, okay, are the tribes of Israel. When Moses, you know, when Moses crossed the river or crossed the Red Sea, these tribes has already been established there. So they are there. This is what they call Israelites. I will explain this to you. They are called Israelites or the Hebrews. Hello, are you there? They are called Israelites or the Hebrews. But in the scripture, if you read the scripture, I want you to understand this because when you start understanding this, it will be easier for you to understand the Bible. Whether you start it on the Old Testament and work your way through the New Testament, you will understand the concept of what God has done in our lives. In the scripture, often it is referred to as house of Israel and house of Judah. If you read your scripture, especially right after the time of Solomon, the nation of Israel is referred in, in two parts. House of Israel and House of Judah. Okay? So especially the time after Solomon. I will explain this to you. The nation of Israel now is referred to as the House of Israel and House of Judah. We need to understand this if you want to know your lineage. At least your spiritual lineage. Amen? So, this is where the identity crisis starts for us Christians. This is where, because we only understand that Israel is one. One nation, yes it is. But in the scripture, it has always been referred to, to two houses. House of Israel and House of Judah. Most of the time, we mistakenly identify and usually and in general, that Israel are Jews. Right? Pag narinig mo yung Israel yan. Are you heard me? So we, we generalize that the whole tribe of Israel are all Jews. That's why we are wrong. Because they are not Jews. And I will explain this as we go along. Today, we will be talking about at least four words, or I hope not today, but we will start with two words for us to be able to understand who's who in the line. Don't you want to know your spiritual line? Hello, are you there? Sa pa ako galing. Galing ako dun sa mga agito. Yung mga tsumasamba sa agito, sa mundo. No, yung mga bahag. Yes, true. But are we connected? To the spiritual family of God? Yes, we are. So today, we will talk about, and I hope, and I will be able to finish at least two of them, we will be able to identify the word Jews for you to know your lineage, the word Israel, the word Ecclesia, maybe next week, and the word, ultimately, Gentiles. Are you there? Para malaman po natin kung saan tayo. Now, for us to start the whole thing, we have to go back Okay, we have to go back to the tribe of Israel. Now, those of you who are studying the Bible, how many of you are studying the Bible or attending Bible studies? Raise your hands. We know that the people of God has been called through Abraham. Amen? 
Abraham, and then Abraham have sons, Isaac and Ishmael, and for whatever purposes. Or Ishmael, and then Ishmael have Jacob. Are you here? And Jacob have one special son, Joseph, where, you know, one of the tribes. And Joseph, after that, Moses. Are you here? Are you here with me? Okay? So, after that, people start asking now for a king. We want the king. We just don't want to be, you know, a bunch of tribes. We want to be a kingdom. We want to be a kingdom. We want to, you know, to be like the other nation. So, they asked for a king. And during that time, they were given King Saul. King Saul, according to the word of God, he's a, he's a very tall guy. Handsome. Hello? He's, he's, they're, they're saying he's a head and a half taller than any other man. So, Pogi? Model? Hello, are you there? Okay, so they had King Saul, but of course, the, 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 this king, they just extracted out of God. But God said, okay, you want one? I'll give you one. But the anointed king that God really wants to give them is not King Saul, but who? King David. Are you here? Tama sa po kayo? Tiraan niyo po malama kasi ito po yung ating pa. And after King David, he has a son. His name is Solomon. During the king, uh, the time of King David and King Solomon, Israel or the Hebrew nation is under what we call the United Kingdom. Hindi po Britain. Are you here? They are called United Kingdom. So lahat po sila iisa lang, iisa lang hari nila. They only have one king, King Solomon. Who said to be the wisest, right? According to the scripture, he had one hundred wives, not two wives. Hello, are you there? You know what happened? Because after Solomon, the kingdom of Israel or the nation of Israel starts to deteriorate. Why? Because Solomon starts to what? associate himself. With what? With idolatry. With all the women that he had from his life. So be careful po. Yung Christian sabi, do not be what? Equally yoke with the unbeliever. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? Because it will defile your status before God. I don't think Solomon was the wisest, although the word of God says he is. <clears throat> I don't think he's the wisest because if the wisest, he would have stayed in the state of where Yahweh wants him to be. But he married 100. So he has one wife from this religion, one wife from this religion, one wife from this religion, and one wife who's worshipping Bato here, Bato there, and all the Batos. Are you here? And guess what happened? God was so angry. So when Solomon died, when Solomon died, his son, Rehoboam, took over the nation. Are you here? Okay? In 975 BC, Rehoboam, which is the son of Solomon, he became what? He's the king now. And his capital is Jerusalem, here in Judah. A little bit up there. I'll show you that later on. Are you coming? Are you following me? Okay? So we have to start here before we know where we are. Para rin po yan, gusto ko malaman kung, si, kung saan yung aking lineage, it starts with, with, the way, with Wales. Amen? You know, when I come to, the, from, if I come to Wales and I find all this blebby, they say, hey, look, I'm your brown cousin. <laughs> or black, for that matter. So Rehoboam took over Solomon. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam took over, but because of the sin, everything now gets mingled up in the nation of Israel. Idolatry is there, worshiping other gods is there, and so on and so forth. So therefore, when he was ruling in Judah, Rehoboam was ruling here in Judah because that's where the capital is, Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, the ten tribe, the tribe of Manasseh, Naphtali, Zebulun, Asher, Manasseh, God, and so on and so forth. They started to have a big fight with Rehoboam. He said, we don't want you to be king. We want our own. Hello? Bumaklas na sila. 
At ayoko na sa JCM. Pagtatayo ko ng bagong MCJ. Hello, are you there? Hello? So these 10 tribes said, we don't want to be king because, you know, we don't like the way you're doing things. And besides, we have, we have, we have wives that are worshiping Allah and you are trying to insist on worshiping only Yahweh, one God, no way. See? Oh, what's the problem, brothers and sisters? When you start associating yourself with so many of these, not whatever God wants us to be, it will become a problem in our lives. Right? At first one, it's okay. Then you start associating yourself with works that are not before the Lord. Sooner or later, you will have conflict within yourself and you will have conflict within others. The ten tribes decided we don't want it anymore. So therefore, we will have what we call our own. So they established what they call the house of Israel. The ten northern kingdoms or the ten tribes are now called house of Israel. Israel and their big boss is Jeroboam the first. He's not the son of Solomon. So they, they decided to come together. Let's oh we're ten. We're ten. So let's put our let's put ourselves together and they created the house of Israel. Ten tribes. And of course, this tribe here, Judah and Benjamin, that's a little small place there on top. Judah and Benjamin and the part of Simeon. They became what we call the House of Judah, the Southern Kingdom. North because taas. Hello, are you there? Alam niyo ba yung north sa taas yon? South sa baba. Are you? Do you know that? Okay, now I know. So Judah and Benjamin now becomes the House of Judah, the Southern Kingdoms, the true the two tribes. Can you follow? I want to know our lineage, spiritual lineage at least. Well, it starts with the physical lineage. So there's the house of Judah, which is reigned by Rehoboam. And there's the house of Israel, which is reigned by Jeroboam, which has the, all the ten tribes. So God is so angry with them. You see what happened when you start worshipping and associating yourself with nations that do not worship Yahweh? Everything will start to disintegrate. That's why you hold your family together in reverence of one holy God through Jesus Christ. Are you here? So, let's go now. So now you have the house of Israel, the northern kingdom. Their capital is Samaria. So Jeroboam said, Kalas, no need to go to Jerusalem for your pilgrimage. We will have our own place, Samaria. That's why in the New Testament, the Samaritans are abomination to the Jews. Hello, are you there? Wala nang kausap eh. Kaya po yung mga, mga Jews, I will explain to you, oh, may Jews na pala. No? During the time of Jesus, the Jews hate the Samaritans. Why? Because magkagalit sila. They are neighbors and they are not talking. Hello, are you there? Wala kang kausap. Parang kapit-bahay mo, ayaw mo kausapin. Okay, kapamilya, pero may kaaway. Right? So they don't want to talk to these people. And that is the place that is there, on the up there, in Manasseh Park. Not on the upper part, on the lower part. <clears throat> that is Samaria. And of course, the house of Judah, their capital is Jerusalem. The house, the, the city of David. Can you follow? Hello? In the scripture, in the scripture, thank you so much. In the scriptures, don't worry, brothers and sisters, it will not take long. But after this, you will know, and it will be easy for you to understand the mystery of the gospel. The house of Israel is also called in the scripture. So when you read the scripture, it is also called Israel, Ephraim. Samaria, Isaac, or the ten tribes. So when you read the scripture and all these words there, it's referring to the northern kingdom. Nahati na po sila. Are you here? And then the house of Judah, the southern kingdom, they are known as Judah, or house of Judah, or Jews. So they are the Jews. The people in Judah are called Jews. No. And it is, you 
know, it is first mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 6. Look at this, you know, 2 Kings. You know, this story is in the first Kings. At the time of Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elak to Syria, and he what? He drove or he drave the Jews from Elak, and the Syrians came to Elak and dwelt there unto this day. The first time that the word Jew was mentioned, that this is the King James Version, was in 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 8. Prior to that, there's no such thing. So Jews is a what? Is a people from Judah. So if you say all Israelites are Jews, it's wrong. Hello, are you there? So what's it about? Julian and Julian. About Jew. Who Jew? Jews in Israel, hindi po totoo yun. Because Jews is exclusively for what? People who are from the tribe of Judah and Benjamin and those foreigners that are with them. Remember we read earlier, Israelites and foreigners. So there is now a separation. So not all Israelites are Jews. Are you hearing me? Nakasun ba kayo? Okay. Praise God. Now, since this time, the separation was always emphasized in the Bible or in the scripture. It is intentionally important. You know why? Because one day God will bring these two together. The two shall be one. Are you here? In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 15 to 20. Are you here with me? Okay? Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15 to 22. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man. You see the distinction here? This is, there are so many scriptures in the Bible that talks about the distinction between the northern kingdom or the kingdom of Judah, or sorry, the uh, house of Judah and the house of Israel. But this is just one of them. Ezekiel 37, verses 15 to 20. Says, the word of the Lord came to me from to Ezekiel. Son of man, take a stick of wood and write on it. Belonging to Judah and the Israelites associated with them. Stick, sticks. Okay? Then take another stick of wood and write on it. What do he need to write? Belonging to Joseph, that is Ephraim, which is what? Israel. Are you here? Can you follow? Is Israel and all the Israelites associated with him. So the 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 the, the, the tribe or the, the house of Israel right now and all those that are associated with him so it, not all of them are born there some of them are crafted into them Kumbaga, just like a brother a brother precious mother now is an American but from Nigeria hello how many of you are Americans raise your hands how many of you have American American relatives right Wala kayo mga kamag-anak sa Amerika na American citizen na ngayon. Hello? You have, right? But they're Filipinos. But they are grafted. They are called the American. Now here, it says here, Belonging to Joseph, that is Ephraim, and all the Israelites associated with them. Lahat na nakasali. Lahat na naging citizen. Okay? I'll explain that to you. Then, join them together into one stick. So, they will have to be put together. <clears throat> So they will become what? One in your hand. So then the people will ask you, won't you tell us what you mean by this? Now the word of God says this. This is what the sovereign Yahweh says. I am going to take what? The stick of Joseph, which is Ephraim, so it's some stick in his hand, and of the Israelite tribe associated with him, and what? Join it to the stick of Judah. So, pag iisa niya ngayon yung stick, yung sticks, magiging stick. They will stick together. Hello? Are you there? So, yun ang promise ng Diyos. Pero, merong dalawang stick during the time. But God promised that He will join them together. I will make them into a what? Single stick of wood and they will become one in my hand. You see the promise of God? Only one. Pastor, bakit it is Judah and it is Israel? Where am I? Hello? Where am I? Next week, pa yun natin malalaman. Kasi ngayon, background pa lang. Are you there? 
Are there? Yes. Pagiging proud kayo paglabas nyo dito, sabi nyo ang Israelite na ako. Pegging, uh, pegging passport. <laughs> He says there, in verse 20, Hold before their eyes the sticks you have written on it, and say to them, this is what the sovereign Adonai says, I will take the Israelites out of the nation. Look at the word, the nation. He will take the Israelites out of the nation where they have gone. Oh, so the Israelites will be what? Drawn to the nations. I will explain that. I will gather them from all and bring them back into their own land. I will make them one nation. Okay? In the land, on the mountain, there will be one king over all of them and there will never again be two nations or divided into two kingdoms. This is the prophecy of Ezekiel. Now, Pastor, where do we where do we play these things? I'm excited because I want to know where I play in the history of God. So what happened here? This is very important for us, church. Why? It is important for us to understand that first the people of Israel as a whole are not Jews. So pag narinig niyo Jews, hindi po lahat ng Israel. Hello, are you there? Hindi po lahat na nandun sa Jerusalem ay Jews. O hindi naman lahat na nandun ay Israelite. Because the Jews is a certain people, although there are some that are assimilated between the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. Technically, the Jews are what? Are the southern kingdom, the house of Judah, with the house of Benjamin or with the tribe of Benjamin. It is important for us to understand this distinction, church. Are you here with me? You want to look at this It is important for us to understand this distinction. For us to what? To connect the new covenant, which is Christ. Otherwise, hindi natin maintindihan kung bakit si Kristo nagunta rito. We will not understand why Christ has come here and established the new covenant in His blood. It is important for us to understand this distinction, for us to also understand the mystery of the gospel, the good news, the evangelion. Are you with me? Why? Because this is very important to us. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, this is Paul speaking again to the church of Ephesus. For this reason, I, Paul, he says here, a prisoner of Christ Jesus in behalf of you. You what? Gentiles. Pastor, wala pa rin ako dyan ah. Gentiles pa rin yun eh. Dapat doon ako sa house of Judah, house of whatever, whatever. house of thrones. Ano, ano dyan? Wala tang kausap. Wala pa rin ako dyan. Pero Paul is saying here, for this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you, Gentiles, assuming that you have heard the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. Look at the word, verse 3. How the mystery was made known to me by revelation. Praise God for Paul. Because he revealed this mystery for us who are away from God before. As it was written, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ. He's trying to tell you right now why Christ came in this world. Not just to save sinners, but to reconcile his people to him. Are you here? So far, we only hear about the house of Judah and house of Israel. We will come to that. Verse 6. This mystery is what? Is that. So he already explained to you what the mystery is. The mystery is that the Gentiles. Well, Pastor, wala pa rin ako nakikita ng Gentiles. I will explain that. So remember this word. The Gentiles are what? Fellow heirs members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So the Gentiles, I will explain the word Gentile in a while, the Gentiles will be part, will be part of the heirs or the body of Christ. Wow, this is really deep before that word. So what happened now? Let's go back. Alamin na mo tayo matapos sa first part. However, this is what happened. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8, God said to Jeremiah, 
I gave faithless what? Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. So God was so angry with this group. He said, Ang tikas ng ulo nyo. I told you not to worship other God. I told you not to, you know, to, to worship any other being. But what did they do? They continue. So God in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8, He says, I issued her a certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. But yet, I saw that her sister Judah, hindi <laughs> pwede isa lang, you know? Sama-sama tayo sa problema. So Judah also had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. Now look at this. There are two houses. God is, you know, angry to both of them. But he is more what? Angry with the house of Israel because with he, with, with her, she gave a what? Certificate of divorce. Now, this is a very important aspect right now. So, God is angry to both because they were both idolatrous, but obviously Israel is the more idolatrous about them, or uh, doing all of this idolatry and adultery and so on and so forth. God is so angry with her, and she said, I issued you certificate of divorce. But now in Judah, she said, I'm also angry with you, but she did not. But Yahweh did not issue a certificate of divorce. Hello? Are you here? So now, there is a problem. One, God said, you're no longer my people. Alas. I hate drugs. Parang ganun sinabi niya, tama? Nakasubo ba kayo? Right? So there are two tribes. Now he hate this one. I will give you a certificate. Hold on to this because this is very important. Judah, you are also committed adultery because you followed your sister Israel, but yet I have a plan for you. And you know what Judah is? This is where the line of Jesus came in. Huh? Amen? So, in 722 to 720, Israel, the northern kingdom, the red one, are you hearing me? They were crushed by the Assyrian. The Assyrian took over this land and they took everybody captive and they brought them to Assyria, to Baghdad. On the upper part, there, somewhere there, in Damascus, they, they brought them there. So, dinala nila, tinangay nila lahat. So, what does it mean? They took all this land. So, what's happening here? It vanished. Wala na po yung tribe na yun. Wala na po yung house na yun. That house was what? Was taken away and dispersed all over. Because God was so angry with them. So they disappeared. Well, what happened to Judah? Eh, nakalusot kami. No. So what happened to Judah? Are you following me? Okay. So God is also angry with Judah. And let, let me just tell you something. You know, God's justice cannot be changed. You have sinned today, God will forgive you. But the justice of God will always be there. He had to make it justifiable. Kayo mga kasalanan natin, huwag kayo matakot ngayon may Kristo ka na. Napagbayaran kung kailangan. Are you with me? You know, some people have sinned. Then they, you know, uh, they, they were so afraid for the consequences of sin because, you know, they will do this, they will pay this. So they will accept Jesus, oh Lord, tapili purahin mo na, pulagi mo lahat. But God says yes. You know, when God gave us the grace to be forgiven on our sin, He did not take out the justice. Because justice will still be there, especially here. Are you me? Kaya kung naloko ka ng tao, naging born again ka, darating araw magbabayad ka pa rin. Pero dahil meron ka ng Diyos, you have a God in your heart, you will be able to say, I can do all things to God who strengthen me. Amen. This is what it's all about. Are you here? Wala tang kausap. May po malakpat, pero walang nag-amen. Amen? Amen? So brothers and sisters, once you are born again, don't think that everything will be erased. Oh, nakalusot na ako. It means 
You will still have to bear the consequences. But this time you have this inner strength in God. You have that grace. Maybe that person that you once, you know, had seen against, because of the grace of God, he will say to you, don't worry. I forgive you. Pakurot na lang. Hello, there. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. That's the grace of God. So in 586 BC, okay, Judah, akala nila nakalusot sila kaya buti nga sa inyo. Oh, siguro kung ako yun sa kanila, oh, buti nga kayo. Ngayon, natunaw na kayo lahat. Noong 586, Judah now started to be conquered by the Babylons. They had their own time! <laughs> Are you hearing me? And you know what happened here, right? The people of Judah were taken to Babylon. This is where Daniel and all these people were taken. Hello? Gusto mo ba kayo para ng Bible? Para tayo ng Bible history. Okay? The, 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 the Judah was taken, even Jerusalem was destroyed. So, the people of God, the nation of Israel, kalas. What are they? Tignan mo nga sa likod mo, baka nandiyan. Tanong mo sa katabi mo, what are they? Suhada. They're not there during this time. Huh? Why? Because of sin. Look at this. I love this. However, however, in 538, okay, in 538, 70 years after, the captivity of Judah was formally ended. Remember, God did not write a certificate of divorce. So, meron pa tayong reconciliation. Like LQ lang tayo. Are you there? How many of you have boyfriends, wives? Nakaaway mo yung asawa mo kanina. Ang kanyari ka. Kanyari lang naman. Galit ako sa asawa ko kahapon. Kanyari lang. Wait, hindi ko naman siya. Ha? Kanyari lang. Pero hindi ko siya inisyua ng certificate of divorce. Alas! So, ibig sabihin, may pwero pa tayong chance to be reconciled. That's what happened to Judah. You see? So, in the captivity, it ended 538, 70 years, as prophesied in the word of God. And, you know, the conqueror uh, Cyrus the Great, he gave the Jews through Nehemiah and so on and so forth, the permission uh, to return to Judea, Judah, and rebuild the temple of God that is taken in the book of Ezra, Nehemiah, Micah, and so on and so forth. This is prophesied. Are you hearing me? So, bumalik po. <laughs> Ito ang toa sila. <clears throat> Balik yung Jerusalem temple, yung second temple, kung tawagin natin. It is written in the scripture. Look, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 10. Are you following? Malapit na po tayo matapos. So, kanina mo pa sinasabi yan. Hello? Mahama pong history. Meron bang history sa oras lang? Meron bang history taon-taon? So, ilang taon pa tayo dito? Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 10 to 11. Look at this. For this is what the Lord, Yahweh, says. When Babylon's 70 years are complete. So, binigyan lang niya na palugit. 70 years, Yahweh said, I will attempt to you again, Judah, and confirm my promise to restore you to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you a future and a hope. Amen! So brothers and sisters, the context of verse 11, madalas natin gamit ito, God, you know, God has a plan for me, He declares it, He planned to prosper me, not to harm me, but this is after we go through what God intended us to be. So kung ikaw ngayon, eh, God is chastising you because of your immaturity, because of your, let's just say, your, you did not you, you use your God-given talent well, and you are going through that right now, you can blame the verse 11. God says, I know the plans I have for you. A plan to prosper you. A plan not to harm you. A plan to give you a future. A plan to give you a hope. Judah, you will be my people again. Para mahina. Para sa kuhayo. So he is back. So what happened now to the others? Divorce. Divorce. Are you, are you here with me? What happened now? Alam mo, mahirap po. May pipindot ko rin. Pipindot ako dito. Dapat po ito nakatikil. So what happened now to the house of Israel? 
after they were scattered. So now, Judah went back, but the Israelites were dispersed. Where were they? This is what we call the great divorce. Great divorce. Okay? Look at this. Although we read this earlier, but it says there, in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 6 to 8. Are you following me? So, kalimutan na natin Judah. Bumalik sila. Puntahan natin Israel. Bakit? Siguro tagadol tayo. Hello? Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Isarili tayo. That's why Israelite, you know, that's why the spiritual relationship of us with Israel is so close. I will explain this because you will see that. The great divorce, the current divorce. The Lord said to me in the days of King Josiah to Jeremiah, have you not seen what she did? Israelite. What faithless woman, Israel. Shocked. I'm so angry. <laughs> Just to put it in a context. How she went up in every high hill and under every green tree. They worship the tree, they worship the hill, they worship the everything. They only see is worship, worship, worship. And they play the whore. And I thought after she has done all this, she will return to me. But she did not. Magyabang pa. No way. Hello? Ilan po sa inyo minsan mali na ayaw pa tumanggap ng pagkakamali? Hello? Pipilitin yung mali para maging mali pa rin. Di ba? Are you here with me? So, Israel has a big problem. These ten tribes. And though after she has done all these things, I was thinking that she will come and say, sorry, no. And her treacherous sister Judah saw this. So what happened now? I had sent her away with a decree of divorce. What is this decree of divorce? You want to know? Please don't issue this to anybody. Look at this. You know how, how strong or how heavy the word decree of divorce is? In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1, it says there, Suppose a woman, so Israel is the woman, that's why later on you will see Jesus Christ. Why Jesus Christ now become the groom of the bride? You see that mystery? Suppose a woman was divorced by her first husband because he found something disgraceful about her, he will what? He wrote out divorce papers, gave them to them, and sent her away. Shoo! Kalas! Papel. At pag umalis sa later, if she married another man who then either divorced her again in the same way or who died, since she slept with her second husband, she cannot marry her first husband again. God wrote a certificate of divorce to what? To Israel. And according to the law, remember Jesus Christ says, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. This is what's going to happen. I am Yahweh. I cannot marry again these people. Why? Because that's what the law said. So what happened now to the ten tribes? Are you hearing me? Sakit, no? Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 19 to 24. This is what happened to them. I, Yahweh, Ego I am. I, I disperse them among the nations. What happened to the ten tribes? God dispersed. Now the word dispersed is this. I mix them follow me to the nations. And they were scattered through the countries. I judged them according to their conduct and their action. And wherever they went among the nations, you see, I dispersed them where? Among the nations. And wherever they went among the nation, they will be profaned by my, my holy name, for it is it is was said to them. They are what? The Lord's people, yet they had to leave his land. So these people now become assimilated to the nations. 
Are you here with me? So the ten tribes, brothers and sisters, technically are not there because they are now what? Assimilated, dispersed, they are scattered or put together with other nations who do not know Yahweh. So they lost their first love. They don't know their love anymore. Apapun ba natin? Napasama sila sa iba sa inyo siguro. Sa Philippines. Maybe they were in Cameroon. Maybe they are in Nigeria. Maybe they went to, to Manila. I don't know where they go. But the word of God says, they were dispersed among the nation. You see, God said, I don't like you anymore. Galas! But He promised earlier, I will bring you back together. How can this happen? Next week. Nakakasun po kayo? Nakakasun po kayo? So, Pastor, parang nakikita ko na kung saan kami nang galing. Okay? So, Ezekiel chapter 19, it says there, But I will show you the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. Again, among the nations. Kanina, among the nations, among the nations, among the nations. The name of Yahweh profane. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord. You will be with that nation. So that nation, I will take you away back to me from that nation. Huh? I will take you out of the nation. Pastor, hindi kita maintindihan. Simple lang po ito. I will make it simplified for you. The ten tribes of Israel, because of their sin of idolatry, and does not recognize Yahweh, they were dispersed. The word dispersed, they were put, embedded, in the other nations of the world. Those that do not know Yahweh also. So can you imagine, you are, you don't know not Yahweh, and you go to a place that doesn't know Yahweh, what, if, what will happen? You will not know Yahweh. So, not knowing Yahweh plus not knowing Yahweh equals not knowing Yahweh. Amen? So they were on the nation. They scattered. All these tribes are scattered on the nation. But God said, I will take you back again from those nations. Now again, this is just my illustration. I don't know where they came from. Or where they went. From Israel, the ten tribes went to Assyria. Amen? And accordingly, according to the studies on the scripture, they were dispersed in all parts of the world. Na, halo na sila. So what is the word here? among the nation. You saw the word, right? Right? We highlighted the word among the nations or the multitude of the nation. Now in Hebrew, among or the multitude of nation means meloha goyim. Hindi po to aloha goyim. Sa Hawaii po yun. Hello, are you there? Wala na kausap eh. Now, Multitude or among the nation, okay, comes from the Hebrew word Meloha Goyim. Now the word Goyim, okay, means nation. The singular form is Goy. Nagoyo. Hello, nagoyo ako. <laughs> Naiskam ako, nagoyo. Pagi mo nagoyim. Yung madalas magoyo, nagogoyim. Hello, are you there? But are you following me? Are you following me? The word of God says, the ten tribes of Israel, the south, the northern kingdom now, are among the nation. They are Meloha Goyim. They are part of the nation. They are the nation. Now, the word nation, when you translate it now to Greek, okay, it means ethnos. Which is translated to Latin, Gentiles. Are you hearing me? Dito nakita ko, oh, dito nakita ko, ha? 
Medyo mabagal lang ang reaction ng Northern Tribes. Yung Southern Tribes, mabilis. Ha! Brothers and sisters, the Northern Tribes, together with other nations that don't know Yahweh, we are now calling them Gentiles! Ano yan ang baby? Wala yan na nakaintindi. Nahiyak na yung bata na tabi. Pastor, sigaw ka na sigaw. But can you see now? That's why when Paul was talking to the people of Ephesus, he was saying to you, Gentiles, he doesn't care if you are from the tent tribe. He couldn't care because I don't even know who you are. You don't have a passport anymore because you have been assimilated to this nation who does not worship Yahweh. So all of you now are Gentiles. And this is where the beauty of the gospel will come in. Ngayon nakikita nyo na kung saan kayo galing. Kasama nyo sa tabi nyo. Tignan mo yung mga tabi nyo. Baka may mga upuan ng bakante dyan. May nakakaupo dyan. Israelita. Kasama ka. You are the Gentiles. They are the Gentiles. Those that have been separated. Remember, remember God said, I don't want you anymore. Now, paano tayo may mare-reconcile? Okay, I'll give you a teaser. And I will close here. In the Old Testament, the only time for that person to be cleansed, that woman, to be cleansed of all the adulterous relationship is when the first husband dies. Pag namatay, yung una original na asawa. Now, church, Jesus Christ died on the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Why? Because He wants to reconcile the original man that is associated to the sin of the Gentiles, now because of the halotry, because of the idolatry, because of the adulter adulteries and all these things, has to die. So therefore, that will render this woman right now again what? Pure in the eyes of the Lord. Therefore, he can be married again with the what? With the group that is the church, the bride of Christ. That's all you can do for the Lord? Maybe you can stop better than that. I'm excited. I am in that line. But sorry, hindi ko pa yung explain. Hindi pa natin explain kung paano nasa sa ibang gender next week pa. But na, at least alam ko na may kasama ako rito. Ha, ha, ha. Kasama ko yung tent tribe. Hey, hey, hey. Eh, yung tent tribe, hindi na nila alam kung sino sila ngayon. Church, it is now the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel to the Gentiles. Because now God is ready to bring you home. He is ready now to bring us home and be married to Him once again. Amen! Amen! Yeah. Praise the Lord! So, I will stop here. Walang mo ba nun? Oo. Will you be here next week? Ngayon, i-re-reconcel na natin. Paano ngayon magiging isa yan? And gentle tayo. Wala tayong relasyon. Brothers and sisters, yun yung ating verse. Once you were what? Far away. Once you were separate from Christ. You were separate from the what? Commonwealth of Israel. Now, you are one. Amen? Next week po, we will close this in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Let's give another clapping hand. Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Lord, Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. Lord, we started as a night death in Christ.